Trainee female officers at the Afghan National Officer Academy in Kabul. These shots were filmed in 2015. The Afghans were mentored by British officers at what became known as Sandhurst in the Sands. Training women in the new security forces was then a key priority for the UK government, but it was complicated work made possible only with the help of local interpreters. I also liked working at the army because at home I had some relatives who had been in the army. This interpreter, whose identity we're protecting, was keen to serve her country, but her work was far from safe. Of course it was really dangerous at that time. We had explosions, we had road mines and stuff, we had them all. Forced out of Afghanistan by Taliban threats, she's been granted temporary leave to study in Iran, but her visa will soon run out. When it does, she fears being deported back to Afghanistan. I won't go back. I don't even want to think about it. Your family are still in Afghanistan. Do they face threats from the Taliban? Yes, they are under pressure. Desperate for asylum in the UK, she's applied to the Afghan relocation scheme known as ARAP, which is jointly administered by the MOD and the Home Office. The schemes received hundreds of thousands of applications and 9,962 people have been helped to safety in the UK. But as of mid-July, the MOD confirmed there are still about 2,000 eligible people and their families stranded in Afghanistan and about 200 and their family members in third countries like Iran and Pakistan. Forces News spoke to a British soldier who trained female Afghan soldiers here at the Officer Training Academy in Kabul. She worked closely with the interpreter we interviewed and although she didn't want to go on camera, she told us, due to cultural reasons, without female interpreters like her, we wouldn't have been able to mentor female Afghan National Army officers and soldiers. She was vital to the work we were doing. And it's not just female interpreters who are struggling. This is former frontline interpreter Shah Jahan and his family celebrating his daughter's first birthday in Pakistan. They were thrilled to arrive here after a fraught border crossing from Afghanistan. But despite receiving full Arab eligibility to come to the UK, more than five months later, he's still waiting in Islamabad for the results of Home Office security checks before he's granted a visa. He's become so desperate, he says he'll go on hunger strike if he doesn't get a decision in the coming days. Well, I have to do it because I want the result. <laughs> I have been very loyal to the British Army when I was working as a petrol interpreter. Then why? Then why they are delaying my case? What's the reason? They, just talk, they have to give me a detail and they have to give me explanation that why well, I'm here for almost six months. And what kind of effect is this weight having on your wife and daughter? It had a very huge effect on us. Like we feel that that that, that we are we are we are depressed and we are we, we don't know because because we, it's 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 it's, a, it's really very uncertain for us that we are here and we don't know that when our visas Nearly one year on from the op-pitting evacuation from Kabul, the MOD says they're investing in a new system and adopting a new approach to casework to help them identify and process eligible people more quickly. Welcome news for those waiting in unbearable conditions who still don't know if they'll get to safety. Rosie Layden, Forces News. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.